Hey guys, welcome back to Battlefield Coverage. It's been a little while, but I'm happy to be returning. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Battlefield 5 reveal and what we learned from the stream. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I'd encourage you guys to click on that watermark in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe and then hit that bell so you guys can get the latest updates from Battlefield 5. Trevor Noah and the team wasted no time in mentioning that Battlefield 5 is, in fact, going to be a World War II game. The Play First trial will be October the 11th, or beta to be more specific. Then we have October the 16th as the Deluxe Edition live release. So a three-day head start on the Standard Edition, which will be live on October the 19th. It may be fair to say that the teaser trailer pretty much confirmed that it was most likely going to be a World War II game. We did hear scant suggestions of an alternate World War II, but that wouldn't necessarily be consistent with the Battlefield franchise. During the beginning of the program, we did get to see some of the concept art, which looked very impressive. And of course, the team was engaged in discussion as Trevor read very carefully from his prepared outlines on the teleprompters. Daniel Berlin started us off with gameplay and modes as he mentioned that the team is expanding the toolbox, giving players access to new abilities to create our own battlefield moments. He relayed that we'll be able to experience a deeper immersion as the team has reintroduced an overhauled movement system. He mentioned this will allow us to traverse the environment a lot better, which I'm happy to hear. Battlefield 3, in my opinion, had a decent system compared to Battlefield 4 before movement there was adjusted, so I'm incredibly encouraged by this announcement. We can look forward to seeing the obligatory environment destruction from damaged buildings to rounds passing through buildings and walls. The team is also bringing back classic modes such as Majority Rules Conquest, but they are also introducing a new game mode called Grand Operation, which entails multiple game modes and multiple maps inside the narrative character journey, and of course, we'll have the single player war stories to look forward to. As the team outlined Grand Operation, they mentioned that it would be massive. It's like a story that takes place over several days. Day one, you jump out of an airplane with a mission to destroy some artillery. Day two, depending on if the first objective was completed, opposing teams will continue to battle it out in an assault game mode which then leads to Day 4, or Final Stand. In Final Stand, or Day 4, players will have limited resources, so you're essentially playing with whatever ammo and supplies your characters have left, and you're essentially just going to be fighting until it's the last team or last man standing. The team mentioned that we may not always get to Day 4, because a lot of the gameplay is going to depend on various stalemates, We'll know more about the game mode in about two weeks as of this live stream recording as they'll be featuring the game in Los Angeles. We did learn that co-op mode was back as combined arms. In simple terms, it's you and your teammates helping one another as you move through war stories and multiplayer in the game. So a little bit of focus is placed on a cooperative effort and hopefully to play the objectives and work as a team essentially. One of the war stories they touched on was the Norlis story that's about a young woman who is part of the Norwegian resistance fighters fighting the German occupation. The idea here, as the team mentioned, is to ground the player into the reality of the World War II story and to elicit an emotional connection. As we return to Daniel Berlin, he gives us a rundown of the immense arsenal we can anticipate from the Second World War, as this was a time of great innovation when it comes to weapons and vehicles. We'll be able to fly iconic airplanes, tanks, and secret weapons, experimental stuff too from World War II, that will help players turn the tide of battle. We also learned about a new fortification system where we can be a little more strategic when it comes to how we choose to defend or advance. A new item that's going to be in the game is the toolbox for the support class, and it's the toolbox that will allow us to set up the fortifications we get a little glimpse of what we can perhaps build, such as foxholes to reinforcing buildings. I suppose you could say it adopts a little from Fortnite, but building fortifications in shooters isn't entirely new. But the idea is kind of like restructuring the environment when maybe a lot of the cover and buildings have been destroyed. And then it was Natalie's turn to tell us about a new aspect to Battlefield, which is the company. It may be fair to say in simple terms that it's just a very interesting customization system 
which will allow us to tailor both characters and vehicles. As she outlines, not only will it affect how characters look, but also how they play. So in essence, what your character chooses or what particular choices you make about vehicles, it will all complement the squad. Equally as interesting, we also learned this. Is this game going to be pay to win? No, you can't pay to get an unfair gameplay advantage. What if I have a lot of money? <laughs> Will it be one of those games where I have to shell out another 50 bucks six months after I've bought the game? Is that how it works? Well, I guess I get, I get the fun part of not taking any more of <laughs> your money as well. But um, no, there's no more premium pass in this game. This means uh, wow. no more. Thank you, thank you. I've always enjoyed the premium pass, but I do understand that not everyone is able to take advantage of it. So I suppose this will level the playing field and we can all save a little bit of money and it creates community unity. Even after the launch, the team has prepared an unfolding of the Battlefield 5 story with Tides of War. We can anticipate an evolution of gameplay as the game story unfolds through time. But most importantly, any and all new content is open to all players. Tides of War will allow players to experience theme chapters of World War II, each spanning over several months. This will be focusing on key moments that impact the outcome of the conflicts. The team kind of elaborated that Battlefield 5 is going to be a huge experience for players as the content will continue to unfold as we play. It will be interesting to see the frequency of content and the amount they release during the coming weeks or months. It kind of reminds me of Progression Unlocked in EverQuest, but unlike EverQuest, it isn't going to be criteria based, but in unfolding as the history plays out in the game. The team gave us a brief look at some of the reward titles we can anticipate with Tides of War. It's something many of us who have played the game are familiar with, but we can at least see the list here. We have new vehicles, weapons, timed events, dog tags, face paint, soldier, and weapon skins. And naturally, you'll just play the game to get your unlocks across all the game modes, so it doesn't matter if it's multiplayer or combined arms. Then, after 27 minutes, we got a look at the trailer. Very impressive, as usual, when it comes to Battlefield trailers. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for this commentary on the Battlefield 5 reveal. I welcome your thoughts and comments in the published section down below. 
Also, if you haven't already, be sure you click on the watermark you see appearing on the screen so you guys can subscribe. Click that bell so you guys can get all the latest news and information out of Battlefield.